and welcome to the travel show with me Lucy Hedges coming to you from the jungle in northern Rwanda where I'm hoping to catch a glimpse of one of the world's most majestic creatures. <laughs> Rwanda, despite its diverse wildlife and natural beauty, has for decades been an unlikely tourist destination. 25 years ago, the genocide here grabbed international headlines. Over 800,000 people were killed in inter-ethnic violence in just 100 days. But a quarter of a century on, and Rwanda has become one of Africa's bucket list destinations. And its biggest draw? the furry, curious cousin to us humans, the mountain gorilla. So I've been promised a chance of a date with a silverback gorilla. I feel like I should help him push. That is, if I ever make it up the mountain. Oh my God, be careful. I'm standing here at the foothills of Rwanda's Volcanoes National Park, which is the home and sanctuary to 20 troops of gorilla. It's very exciting. Off we go. The park is part of the larger Virunga conservation area and a world heritage site. It's also the only place in the world where the gorilla population is on the rise. And this year marks 40 years since money from tourism was first used for their conservation. Francis, hey! We're coming to the park. So this is where the park begins. You can see the bamboo. There is a trench here. This marks a difference to make the communities understand where the park begins and to avoid the buffaloes not to come over. And ahead of me, there is a team of trackers. Hey, trackers! I'm Lucy, good to meet you! Before any traveller takes to the mountain, the rangers share essential knowledge. It's so beautiful walking through here. Yes, sometimes gorillas come the bamboo. Really? They come yeah. this far down? They can even come outside. But once we come the gorillas, it will need us to stay together be creating a distance between us and the gorillas. We feel we could have like a seven meters distance. We need to respect their movement. So there is a sound we have to do like a <coughs> Once you do that, it's a confirmation that everything's okay. Oh, okay. But once the silver back or oh, any gorilla say, <coughs> yeah. then that means that's not good. That's not good. So what yeah. I'm doing, I will have to stop. But then it needs me to say, <coughs> So That's that, a uh, I, I make a situation feel is okay. It's pretty huge. These are gorilla droppings. It leads where the gorillas are. So I follow the paths of poo. <laughs> that, as I walk, branches are like gripping my legs. Um, but the trackers have cleared a path for us and I can hear gorillas. I've heard at least three grunts and gorilla noises. Is pre is pretty tough, I'm not gonna lie. The higher we get, the higher the altitude, my breath is getting a bit shorter. Three hours and four thousand meters above sea level, and I was beginning to fear I might not ever find a gorilla.
This is the Sousa group. It's made up of 23 gorillas, including, unusually, three silverbacks. You know, you're not going to be scared, but they're so big. <laughs> I grabbed, I grabbed yeah, Francis, like, so and I've like depended on it. And then a moment I'd been waiting for. Time to put my gorilla talk to the test. Let's kick it the <clears throat> Yeah, we have to make him that feel okay with yeah, us. Yes, I know obviously the track, the trackers, but how do you make sure you always find them? How do you know? The, the thing is make sure don't lose them on a single day. <laughs> you follow their movement every day, such that where they spend the night, you start there from the next day. So you have that all the year round. Okay. And how long have you been doing this? For now, I'm coming to 18 years. 18 years. Yes. Wow. You must love them. Yes, yeah. because this is the work that is dynamic. You always see new different things. The way you see the gurus today, it's not what you see for tomorrow. We've, we've really, really locked out here. So we've got mother cradling her baby. We've got black bags. And we've got the mother of all gorillas, the silverback over there. He's just watching us, watching him. I can't believe where this goes. My mind is just absolutely blown. They are so beautiful. And when you think we share 98% of our DNA with these great apes, you understand why they too are curious about us. Rwanda, in collaboration with international conservation partners, has achieved remarkable success in not only protecting, but growing the mountain gorilla population. In fact, there's now a thousand mountain gorillas here in the wild, up from 200 just two decades ago, when they were on the brink of extinction. This is primarily down to the decrease in poaching when the gorillas were hunted for meat. But in an effort to protect the gorillas, poachers were trained to become mountain guides and porters here, further supporting tourism. So talk to me about the poaching here. I can say there is no problem. Mm -hmm. But there is no problem because you keep avoiding it not happening by involving with the communities and having their land poaching patrols. Yeah. But you can't say it is done, then you leave. So we yeah. keep on. But of course, more gorillas means they need more space. The government has now pledged to expand the forest by 23%, adding almost 4,000 hectares to its current 16,000. So to me, I think the extension of the park is part of the making the space much big for the gorillas, but it's another way to bring the climate the way it used to be. So it's good for the Rwanda, good for the planet. Yes. Yeah. So it'll be for all of us. And whilst the numbers here are increasing, the conservationists here cannot become complacent. Between patrolling the park for any remaining poachers or monitoring the gorillas' health, there's an army of people involved in protecting them. Noeli Bosco is a gorilla doctor and the jungle is his clinic. Today, he's come to check on one of his patients. Hey, Noeli. I'm good. That's why I come here in the jungle. Thank you. Yeah. How do you know exactly <laughs> who is who? Each one of this group has a specific nose print. And then these oh, guys wow. will have the gorilla card. They look at the nose print, they check on the animal, they're like, oh, this, this one, this, this one. So then over time, you get used to it. So talk to me about just how important your work is to the conservation. Well, very much important because mm. we, we, gorilla doctors, is uh, credited for uh, the half of the population growth. But um, everyone has contributed, mm. including tourism. And wow. this increases for 4% every year. In fact, tourists pay $1,500 to spend an hour up here with these great apes. That's an expensive trek, but it is contributing to conservation. When you're preparing for maybe a medical action, you're so stressed. You don't know what, what is going to come out. You just come here stressed, you have to be responsible for these guys, you have to yeah. be for gorillas. You, you have too much new in a very short time. Mm -hmm. But when you finish, you come back the next morning, you see the guy playing or picking some food, you're like, wow, oh, I made it. Yeah, like, I did so, that. Yeah that's, what you, yeah, that's why you like it. Now that the trackers have located the gorillas, the tours for the travellers can begin. So now I'm just tagging along with one of Francis's tourist groups. Gorilla. There he is. Just chowing down on 
some leaves. You just hear little grunts just in the distance. At the minute, I think it's quite hard to tell if it's aggressive or playful grunts. What can we do to stand there and wait to see what happens? Yeah. So how long have you been planning this trip? Over 12 months we started planning it. It's been on our bucket list for quite some time. Yeah. So it has been amazing, absolutely. And how do you feel now that you've seen them? Fantastic. Wonderful feeling. So blessed. Yeah, you can end it too. It's very rare that I'm lost for words, but these beautiful, majestic creatures have just completely taken my breath away. And just being able to watch them eating, interacting, and even communicating with us in their natural habitat is hands down one of the best experiences that I've ever had the pleasure of having while being on my travels. I highly recommend it. Still to come. I've signed up to explore some alternative ways to experience this, the country of a thousand hills. I take on these African champs. Oh no, I'm not! And I head down to explore one of the deepest lakes in the world. Once a hotbed of violence during the conflict, but now a go-to destination for any traveller here. It looks like there's a party over there, a beach party. My kind of place. So now that I've spent time with the awesome gorillas, I'm heading off the beaten track to see what else Rwanda has to offer. The last two decades have seen a real turnaround in the country's international appeal, and tourism is really on the rise. In fact, Rwanda has set itself up as Africa's new big luxury travel destination. So it's no surprise the tourism economy here is booming. It's growing by 15% every year, making it one of the fastest growing tourism economies in the world. The government traditionally focused on attracting big spenders to stay in luxury lodges and spend a small fortune trekking with the gorillas. But tourism is now opening up further to cater for people with all kinds of budgets. And if you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie, you can have one hell of a ride here. I'm Zado from the Slow Cycle. What beautiful name! So if you don't mind, I can show you your bike. Yes. So you're gonna have a ride today with us? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so this is your bike. Mm -hmm. So it's an e-bike. Uh, because the e-bike has a battery, so when you go up, so you, if you need like an assist, you just press that. Yeah, you press right here mm -hmm. to get an assist. Third and the fourth. Ultimate power. Yeah. So I think you're very it's excited just to cycle here. I, I'm very excited. Okay, How can I not be excited? On. Look at this view. Jado runs four new bike routes through the country, covering over 500 kilometers of tracks. What is the bonus of having these bikes for tourists? With the e-bikes e everywhere, it doesn't matter how steep the hill is, anyone can go. Rwanda has so many beautiful views, mm, oh, stunning absolutely. places, like many hills. Supported by the World Bank, the government's 2020 vision for the reconstruction of the country after the genocide has led to huge investment in Rwandan infrastructure. That's why these roads are a joy to ride. What's it been like for you witnessing just how popular cycling is getting here? It makes my heart feel happy yeah. because I'm doing the cycling trips with the, with the guests, the people from all over. Jado tells me that over the last few years, cycling has really taken off here. Perhaps inspired by these guys, the National Rwandan Cycle Team, 
they're African champions. Hey guys! They have inspired the nation and the international cycling community with their success story and Olympic performances. From struggling racers a few years ago, they're now one of Africa's most successful teams. I want to see what you've got, guys. I know I'm on an e-bike, but should we race? Go! <laughs> Yeah, I was never going to beat these champs. <laughs> Hi. So where are we going now? Now we are going to visit some locals just to test the real Rwandan life. Oh, I'm going to get a Rwandan, a true Rwandan experience. Vite. Vite. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is a cooperative made up of women whose husbands have abandoned them. To support themselves, they now sell traditional banana beer. And I'm about to help make some brew. Women are playing a pivotal role in rebuilding the country and the economy, particularly since hundreds of thousands of men lost their lives during the genocide. Now Rwanda has the highest number of women in parliament in the world. 68% of lawmakers here are female. Do you enjoy sharing Rwandan culture with tourists? <laughs> In. Yeah. What are we doing? Just crushing. Yes, like crushing that. movements. Oh. Yeah. oh my god, you gotta restart. Is that the word? Collect it like so, pour it back over, and it pours back through, but leaves the bits behind. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Once we've distilled the juice, it's time to grind the millets to allow for fermentation. Oh, this is a lot less strenuous than crushing the bananas. <laughs> How's this? Am I doing a good job? Oh, yes. Good? Yeah, All right. Well, since I've got to get back on my journey, I was relieved to hear they had plenty of banana beer already made for me to try. Delicious. I was not expecting this at all. I mean, just the level of hospitality they've welcomed me in. I genuinely feel like one of them. They've been nothing but kind. And to think that we've gone from a pile of bananas and grass to this is just incredible. What an experience. <laughs> Great to meet the locals benefiting from tourists who pass through and spend their time and money in these communities. Next stop on my journey, Lake Kivu. Hey! <laughs> this is one of the African Great Lakes and sits on the border between Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I'm here to explore the water by kayak. And your right hand, are you all right-handed? Okay. To decide you go forward. Seems easy enough. For years after the Civil War, the shores of this lake were no-go zones. This was one of the epicenters of the fighting in 1995. Now, there's a huge push to develop this area. This is part of the Kivu Belt Tourism Initiative. Baby! 
This is absolutely spectacular. Kayaking doesn't get any better than this. Certainly beats the last experience I had. <laughs> a lake in the UK. Elwa is part of the new generation of Rwandans pursuing a career in adventure travel and entrepreneurship. This is such a great uh, example of innovation in tourism in Rwanda. So it's important then to show the world that there's more to Rwanda than just gorillas. Yes. So what about the beautiful tea estates? What about the uh, coffee plantations? What about kayaking? You can stay over on an island. That's, that's a beautiful experience. We have a monkey island that you can, you can go see. It's something that is exciting, something that people would love, but they don't know. And how do the local people feel about it? Are they excited to welcome tourists into the area? Oh, as Rwandans, welcoming people is part of our culture. So um, they're, they're excited to see you. Most of the people, you see the kids running around, yeah. trying to grab your kayak. Or... <laughs> it's been an incredibly wild and action-packed day, and I am certainly off the hook for any more exercise for the rest of the year, that's for sure. While the history of the genocide will never be forgotten, these travel experiences really show a different side of Rwanda. Everywhere you turn, there's just something new on offer. This place really is amazing. The people here have been so eager to welcome me on my first ever trip to this country. Tourism is providing an excellent opportunity for Rwandans to reshape their country's image. And you can only hope the dark days are well and truly in the past.